I had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador. In addition to a long history lying about his fight for civil rights, Joe Biden has now also been lying about being arrested when trying to meet Nelson Mandela in prison. This story is wild because the campaign is admitting that it's untrue. Now, I'm going to remind you later of his civil rights lies. Uh, we'll get to that. But let me show you what he's been saying about um, uh, Nelson Mandela. So this is uh, at a recent event. This was posted by uh, Sean King. Sean King says, I knew there'd be video. What a mess. Here is Joe Biden abandoning his teleprompter in South Carolina this past week, completely fabricating that he was arrested in South Africa during apartheid. All lies. The U.S. ambassador says he was arrested with him, uh, says it's a lie. And I'll get to that story in, in a minute. But first, let's watch Joe Biden uh, make this claim. This day, 30 years ago, Nelson Mandela walked out of prison and entered into discussions about apartheid. I had the great honor of meeting him. I had the great honor of being arrested with our U.N. ambassador on the streets of Soweto trying to get to see him on Robbins Island. All right. That's a lie. <laughs> just a total, a total lie. Now, uh, New York Times first reported on this. Here they, uh, here's the tweet. Joe Biden has told audiences three times in the past two weeks that he was arrested 40 years ago in South Africa while trying to meet Nelson Mandela. The episode is not in his memoir, and he hasn't spoken prominently of it before. Let me show you BBC's reporting on this. Joe Biden drops claim he was arrested seeing Mandela. So... Uh, uh, the U.S. presidential contender had repeatedly said he was arrested during a trip there in the 1970s when South Africa was under apartheid. But a deputy campaign manager told reporters Mr. Biden had been referring to an episode where he was separated from black colleagues at an airport. Let's get a little more into this. Mr. Biden, at the time a senator in Delaware, sorry, for Delaware, said he had been visiting the country with a delegation of American officials and had planned to visit Mandela in prison. But during the trip, Mr. Biden said he had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador on the streets of Soweto while trying to reach the civil rights leader on Robben Island. The town of Soweto is more than 760 miles from Robben Island. At a Black History Awards brunch in Las Vegas last week, he also said Mandela had thanked him for his efforts. Quote, he threw his arms around me and said, I want to say thank you, Mr. Biden told onlookers. I said, what are you thanking me for, Mr. President? He said, you tried to save me. You got arrested trying to save me. This is, <laughs> this is Trumpian. Obviously. This is the kind of lie Donald Trump would tell. And this is something that easily, this lie could easily be put into an attack ad from Donald Trump on Joe Biden. Now, the fear is not that Donald Trump's going to get Democratic voters. The fear is that Joe Biden would suppress the vote, which he absolutely would. You put out, I mean, there's so many endless lies. Again, I'll get to again the, the civil rights in a second, his lies on that. But you put these lies into an attack out against Joe Biden, you suppress the Democratic base. Young people aren't coming out for Joe Biden. I can guarantee you that. There's a little more here, though. Uh, Mr. Biden's account of what happened has been uh, rebuffed by Andrew Young, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. at the time, who says he traveled with Mr. Biden to South Africa. Local media have also failed to find any evidence of an arrest being made. Fact checkers at the Washington Post called the claim ridicul uh, ridiculous on Tuesday as they awarded it for Pinocchios. On Tuesday, Mr. Biden's deputy campaign manager, Kate Bedingfield, told reporters Mr. Biden had been referring to an incident where he was separated from his party at Johannesburg Airport. When a journalist noted that being separated did not equate with an arrest, Ms. Bedingfield repeated that it had been a separation. <laughs> uh, quote, they, uh, he was not allowed to go through the same door as the, the rest of the party he was with, said Ms. Bedingfield. Obviously, it was apartheid South Africa. There was a white door, there was a black door. He did not want to go through the white door and have the rest of the party go through the black door. He was separated. So, at what point is the arrest? The account echoes uh, earlier comments made by Mr. Biden, but a statement he made in 2013 gives a different account of his trip. Quote, when I exited the plane, I was directed to one side of the tarmac, while the African-American congressmen traveling with me were sent to the other side, said Mr. Biden. I refused to break off, and the officials finally relented. So let's, first of all, yeah, this is, 
total lie. Like, how do you do this as a Democratic uh, Party candidate and not think you're going to face repercussions? Like, this is not the Republican Party. The, like, the Republican Party, the Trump base, will come out for Trump regardless of how many lies he tells. When it comes to Democratic candidates, they have standards, which is why I'm telling you Biden would be an absolute horrible nominee because he would suppress the base. Young people especially will not come out for Joe Biden. Let me um now remind you of this crazy lie. Like the amount of lies and just embellishments that Joe Biden uh, uh, claims on a, on, a, on a weekly basis is just absurd. So Sean King here tweets out, an absolutely brutal moment where an entire panel of CNN laughs out loud at how Joe Biden is trying to explain his lies about marching in the civil rights movement. What's really wild is that he has restarted these lies again in South Carolina and Iowa. So Joe Biden, now this is like uh, about a month ago now, I would hope at this point after being called out, Biden has stopped. But this is the kind of lie he has told again and again and again. Even when called out on it, he has continued to lie about it. So let me show you uh, CNN's uh, report and reaction to this. And Jeff, eye-opening uh, lead in a New York Times profile of Joe Biden's 1988 presidential campaign, the first time he ran for president, uh, he lied to voters, according to the New York Times, uh, quoting aides of, of Biden's, about having marched in the civil rights movement. This is Biden making this false claim in 1987. When I marched in the civil rights movement, I did not march with a 12-point program. I marched with tens of thousands of others to change attitudes. And the New York Times reports, quote, more than once, advisors had gently reminded Mr. Biden of the problem with this formulation. He had not actually marched during the civil rights movement. And more than once, Mr. Biden assured them that he understood. Kept telling the story anyway. That is really, really weird. It is. And the story was uh, a reminder that in that 88 race, he was one of the younger candidates. In the race. He was 44 years old. He was the new generation. But, uh, you know, if you haven't read the book of what it takes about the 1988 campaign, uh, rich chapters of Joe Biden and others, but it does point out a problem, a challenge for Joe Biden. Has he fixed that issue? When he gets very comfortable out on the stump speaking and other things, he has tended to embellish. He has tended to, um, you know, make things sound slightly rosier than they are. Now, his aides went back to say, look, he was in office marching for the idea of civil rights, but was not actually marching in the streets. But that would not huh? fly as much that he yeah, was supporting civil fly. rights. But I'm saying that in today's <laughs> that's not the word marching age of Twitter, okay. <laughs> I know, you're just telling what they said. Right, but yeah, but yeah. in the age of Twitter today, Instagram, there would be pictures of him not marching. Right. So you <laughs> cannot get away with that in this moment. So that's his big challenge. Yeah. Can he modernize himself? And has he sort of brushed away all those old tendencies he had that ultimately ended um, you know, to him dropping out before the Iowa caucuses by you know, because he um, plagiarized a speech. Yeah, that was another part <laughs> that I forgot to mention. Joe Biden has plagiarized a speech. In fact, there are multiple cases of Joe Biden and his plagiarism. So I've done a story on, um, I believe I did a story on the plagiarism. I'm almost positive I did. If I didn't, then it's included in, in a different story. But I definitely did, did a story on Joe Biden's lies about uh, the civil rights movement and his involvement in it. So I'll link to that um, above the video, wherever that link goes. Uh, so check that out if you want more details on that. But this just goes to show the history of Joe Biden lying and lying and lying. And how Democratic voters do care about this. While you can say, oh, Trump's worse. Yeah, obviously Trump's worse. Like, why is that the bar? Because that is not the bar for Democratic voters. So you have someone that is Trumpian in their lies as the nominee you suppress the Democratic base. He will not win. He would lose to Donald Trump because it's very easy to suppress the Democratic base when a lot of them did not come out in 2016 because they did not like Hillary Clinton. You have to, as a candidate in 2020, you have to excite people, 40% of the country that doesn't normally vote. So that includes a lot of young people. That includes working class voters. That includes a lot of independents, people that are disillusioned with this two-party system that don't like these candidates like Joe Biden, that in, in addition to their various lies, have been attached to, to massive corporations and their interests their entire career. You're not going to bring people out with candidates like this. You need somebody that actually uh, energizes the base. And right now, only one candidate is doing that, and that's Bernie Sanders.